presenting the final reports for Beagle Logic, a Google Summer of Code project with BeagleBo.org that realizes a 14 channel 100 mega samples per second logic analyzer using both the programmable real time units and a kernel module on the BeagleBone or the BeagleBone Black. Since the BeagleBone is a full featured Linux computer, so Beagle Logic can not only just capture raw logic data but it can also process it using libraries via SIGROC to obtain decoded logic protocols like I2C, I2S, SPI, etc. So here you can see an example command line which executes on the BeagleBone itself and uses the Beagle Logic driver which has been integrated with the SIGROC library to capture and decode SPI waveform. Or since the Beagle Logic kernel module presents itself as a normal device node, so you can also use standard Unix tools like DD and Hexdump to capture and view data, or you can also pipe the output to a LCO compressor to obtain a compressed logic term. Beagle Logic is optimized for large captures. The buffer can be as large as 360 megabytes, and depending upon bandwidth and processing time availability, Beagle Logic can also accomplish continuous or streaming capture. And as a bonus feature, Beagle Logic also has a web interface which is accessible via port 4000 for quickly capturing and viewing data right here in the web browser. So let's have a quick demonstration of the web interface. Here is our test setup, a BeagleBone Black, a Python script running on it which is outputting bytes 00 to FF from the SPI port here and which is connected to the inputs of Beagle Logic. So now let's go to the web browser here. You can see the command line uh, with the server started and listening. And this is the live view from the camera uh, showing the outputs of the SPI port being connected to the inputs of Beagle Logic here. So now let's open up the web browser here. 4000. So here we go. Uh, and I'm going to select port 300. And I'm going to select these four pins for capture. Uh, the pin layout here closely resembles the layout of the bottom half of the P8 header on the BeagleBone Black. So now let's do a capture. So as you can see, it's apparent that this line is the serial clock and this line is the serial data and that these two pins are not changing state. So let's omit these two pins from the next capture and label this pin as serial data and this pin as serial clock and let's do a capture again so you can see that the pin annotations have now been reflected here let's try with a larger number of samples and a higher sample rate there we go so you can see that uh, the pulses have got stretched out proportionately okay so now let's get back to the slides so the web interface currently has a few limitations, uh, the first being that it's, it does not scale well with uh, large sample sets. This is because the WaveDrum library is not very efficient at rendering large size uh, samples. Uh, the browser window becomes non-responsive for over a minute and that it does not support zooming in and out. A long term workaround for this would be to have a full custom HTML5 canvas based view component. Uh, we can also uh, have more efficient link utilization uh, between the BeagleBone and the PC. So a long-term workaround for this would be to have a web sockets and a backend in C instead of the current Node.js backend, and also some form of compression with an algorithm like RLE or LZ4. However, all said and done, uh, the web interface in its current form is quite usable and I hope you'll find it useful. So now let's have a look at uh, how it's all put together. PRU1 is responsible for sampling the input probes. Uh, then PRU1 transmits those bytes to PRU0 by using the XOUT instruction. PRU0 then writes those sample bytes directly into the system memory without intervention from the Cortex-8 core here. Two kernel modules running on the Cortex-8 are responsible for communicating with the PRUs and also managing the buffer. Since large contiguous buffers are difficult to obtain, so the Beagle Logic module divides a large buffer into chunks of 4 megabyte each, and then it uh, passes on the physical addresses of each of those 4 megabytes chunk into PRU0. 
PR is zero, then it fills those buffers, and once it fills a buffer, it sends an interrupt to the kernel modules, and then the kernel module enables reading out that buffer via either read or mmap by notifying the use space application via poll if it's doing non-blocking I/O. The user space application opens Dave Beagle logic, and then it can do I/O CTL calls to uh, configure various parameters like the sample rate and whether the uh, capture is to be one shot or continuous. To enable operation of Beagle logic from the command line, there's also a magic CSFS entry for every IOCTL call for convenience. And as I already highlighted, the Paul and LSeq function uh, seek to help the user space application if it's using the memory map to user space of this entire buffer, which is exposed as one contiguous unit. So this is a brief overview of how Beagle Logic works. Now, in the next slide, let's have a look at uh, how the development of Beagle Logic happened since the beginning of the coding period in May 19th, uh, when in the first two weeks I wrote the first prototype of the PRU firmware and the user space Beagle Logic app using the UIU kernel driver and libpress TRV, which I found inefficient because I could not do captures larger than eight megabytes, the kernel driver crashed, and that mem copy was slow because of caching issues. So to resolve this caching issues and have a larger memory, I decided to go into the kernel. And then in the third and the fourth week, I developed the Beagle Logic kernel module, initially beginning as an extension to the PR remote proc module, then moving out as the code increase in complexity. I also ported uh, the PRU firmware initially in PASM to the new TI PRU C compiler. And in the fourth week, Beagle Logic accomplished its first logic capture of a I square S dump between a microcontroller and an audio tag. As a demonstration of the continuous sampling abilities of Beagle Logic, I did this particular lo logic dump using DD command followed by uh, the LZO compressor to obtain a 250 megabyte logic term at 10 mega samples per second, which when decompressed gives you a file that's around one gigabyte in size. This binary file when processed using SIGROC and other libraries leads to this 20 megabyte audio file at 44.1 kilohertz 16 bit stereo, uh, which, can, which can be listened to and it sounds just like original. So in the fifth week, uh, since the Beagle logic was in quite usable state, so I submitted uh, the patch set into the Beaglebone community kernel and it got accepted there. And in the fifth week, I also made a documentation wiki live at BeagleLogic.net. In sixth and seventh weeks, I did some work on the SIGROC bindings for Beagle logic. Since the SIGROC bindings used uh, non-blocking IO, so I had to implement the Paul and the LSEQ functions in addition to the non-blocking IO, which was already there. So in the seventh week, I completed the SIGROC bindings, which also had working software triggers. So if you use Beagle Logic with the SIGROC library, you can have software triggering capabilities. And since it was a major change in the kernel module as well, I released another passage to the BeagleBone kernel, which is included since uh, kernel versions uh, after Bone 60. And the same week, I also began work on the web interface. After two or three patch revisions, uh, after discussions to the developers on the mailing list, the Beagle Logic patch set finally got accepted in the ninth week. And from uh, the eight to 12th weeks, uh, the Beagle Logic web interface was materialized. It uses Node.js at the backend and socket IO as the data link between the front end and the server running on the Beagle Bone. The front end is built using Bootstrap, jQuery, and the WaveDrum library, which is used for rendering the logic samples. The web backend uses SIGROC CLI behind the scenes. Uh, the ASCII output of the SIGROC CLI application uh, almost one to one correspondence with uh, the WaveDrum syntax. So uh, the, the client application running on the web browser, it parses the output of SIGROC CLI into the wave from syntax and it passes it on for rendering. So by the end of the coding period, I was ready with the web interface. Now Beagle Logic 
also got featured on Hackaday when uh, the Hackaday people were at I3 Detroit and they interacted with Jason Kreiner uh, and, and in the talk he showed Beagle Logic running. And the second post is by Bert, who is one of the founders and maintainers of the Sigrock project, announcing the successful merger of the Sigrock bindings into the LibSigrock library. So this is uh, my plans ahead for Beagle Logic. Uh, the first priority is to have Beagle Logic shipping with every uh, Beagle bone. So the first step in this direction would be to have uh, the Beagle Logic distribution running by default and being shipped on the latest system images on the BeagleBone plaque. Then there's also the official Beagle Logic cape in the making, which would allow you to connect external circuits safely to, to Beagle Logic. Then I personally consider that Beagle Logic can be more than a logic analyzer in the sense that uh, the high speed data capture interface, uh, which, which can also be um, accessed as a memory map uh, and the fact that there's a, a very large uh, capture buffer available so this makes Beagle Logic very useful for applications beyond just uh, a logic analysis so you can have maybe a camera connected to the inputs of the PRU and using the shared memory you can access and capture a full frame there or maybe you can also connect a high speed ADC to the inputs of the PRU and you can have the Beagle Logic driver capture the data at high speeds. Then this was a proposal uh, by one of the community members of SIGROC to have USB gadget kernel drivers for Beagle Logic, which would be more efficient in terms of link utilization, which would add an additional vendor specific interface in addition to the RNDIS, the virtual serial ports and the master's interface that's available with the Beagle One Black and it can be used with PC-based clients with a custom protocol with, uh, with bindings to libraries like Sigra for the same. And I think it would be a quite a nice addition to Beagle Logic. Then as I highlighted earlier, the web interface can also do with uh, quite few improvements here. Uh, since the BeagleBone community is planning to migrate from a BeagleBone community kernel to a mainline kernel in the future, so I'm looking forward to port the Beagle Logic kernel driver in the future once the dependencies on which the kernel driver depends uh, get accepted into the mainline. And as always, any suggestions and patches from the community are always welcome. And let me know if how Beagle Logic helped you in debugging your circuits or learning more about digital and logic protocols. So you can always stay in touch with me and you can have latest information on the project uh, by visiting my blog at The Embedded Kitchen. For any information related to the Beagle Logic project, you can visit BeagleLogic.net. This is a link to the demo version of the web application right now, which does not support connecting to your BeagleBone hardware. But in the near future, you can also access a web application that would connect to your BeagleBone and allow you to use your logic analyzer from the cloud. So the code is available at this particular repository and the wiki pages contain all the necessary documentation. Uh, for any, really, any discussions of this project, uh, you can always log on to hash Beagle IRC channel and you can find me by the nickname Abhishek underscore. So thanks for sticking in so far. I'd like to thank Jason Kreiner and the BeagleBo.org community for accepting Beagle Logic as a Google Summer of Code project. I'd also like to thank my project mentors, Matt Hunyu and Charles for their valuable insights and inputs. Pantelis Antonio for quite a heads ups related to kernel development in general and regarding memory management and the PRU Remote Pro kernel driver, official documentation available was quite sparse and he helped a lot to in navigate it. I'd also like to thank Bert and the Sigro community for being very supportive with Beagle Logic. Ever since I first proposed the project and was in talks with BeagleBo.org for this project as a Google Summer of Code project. And last but not the least, I'd also like to thank the IRC channels, hash Beagle GSOC and hash SIGROC, where I could, uh, I could get help very quickly and was able to resolve my doubts and move along with my project. 
Thanks for watching.